This video demonstrates how to use functions along with structs. What we're going to do is convert this working program to use functions to do the printing. So let's go ahead and compile and see the way that this program behaves. Okay, and it simply prints out the name of the person is a, the age of the person, year old, and then their occupation. Okay, so I'd like to make a function that does this printing. So let's go ahead and start this. So since I'm just printing in this function, the return type will be a void. There is nothing to return. And what are we printing? We're going to print the person. That'll be the name of the function. And the type we're going to pass into the function is going to be person. The data type, which we've declared as a struct, is person. That's the data type. And the variable we'll have will be just a p. And that is the beginning of our function. Now we have a return. And what do we want to do? We want to print out the person. OK, well, let's go ahead and compile and see if we're OK so far. We are not. So what's wrong? On line 5, which is our declaration of the function, we have a variable field print person declared void. And that's, that's right. We did do that. What else is there? A person was not declared in the scope. Ah, that's right. The struct is actually located inside of main. And so the scope of the struct is in main, meaning I can't access the struct outside of main. We don't have any errors inside of main when using the struct person because it's in the same scope. But once we leave main, that means basically leaving outside of these curly braces, then the struct doesn't exist. So I need to make the struct global. So I'm going to cut out the struct, place it towards the top of the file, so that we know we have a global struct. OK, now let's compile. No errors this time. Does the program still work? It does. Tina is a 47-year-old plumber. And this is fine because now the struct is in the global scope, so all functions can access this struct, including main. All right. So what else do we need to do? Now we need to use print person, but we also need to fill in print person. Let's start by filling in print person. I'm going to just cut the current print statement, and I'm going to paste it inside of my function. And let's go ahead and give a compilation. Here we have an error, line 12. P1 was not declared. That's right, because we're actually this function has the variable P, not P1. So we just remove those ones, and let's see what we have. No compilation errors. We also don't have any output right now. That's because main is just creating a struct, assigns values to each of the variables of the struct, and then returns 0. So let's use that function, print person, and we're going to pass in person1 to be printed. We run the program, there we have the expected output. All right, cool. Now we could create a second person, let's say person P2. And what information do we want? So P2 could be someone named Frank. And the age is 23. And the occupation could be college student. There we go. And now we want to print that. So we go print person to call the function. And we pass in person2. Now let's compile. No errors and execute. Tina is a 47-year-old plumber, and Frank is a 23-year-old college student. Thank you.